I actually live in a palace. This place is over 10,000 square feet. It's a long story why I'm here, but the short version of the story why I'm here is my father was the town janitor. He ended up owning a lot of the buildings he used to clean, and now is one of the wealthiest developers in this part of California. And even during hard times, which are right now, many other developers lost everything, and he still is very, very wealthy. His wealth gives me the opportunity to do a lot of the things that I'm doing, like having time during the middle of the day to make a video. Here are some of his secrets I want to share with you. My father was eligible for welfare when we were little kids. We were a very poor family. I understand that there's Middle East poor and there's American poor. And I know an American poor person is actually very wealthy. I respect that and I understand that. He was eligible for wel welfare, but he never took it. He opened up his own janitorial business and he did windows. No one else did windows. He never missed an appointment. If one of his employees didn't show up, he grabbed my mother and us kids and we went in the middle of the night and cleaned. He didn't leverage himself too far. He used one building as leverage to build another building, but he never let the leverage get to the point where he was so leveraged that when the times got tough, he would go broke. It kept him growing slowly over time. Rather than selling his properties and taking the cash and paying all the taxes, he took tax deferred exchange and he exchanged properties into other properties to avoid paying taxes and to keep moving up the ladder to get bigger and bigger properties. We were driving a little Pinto. It was a $200 car. He had made a half a million dollars on a project 30 years ago. And he said, I'm not going to buy a new car. If you buy a car, if you buy a car before you've made your wealth, you've spent a significant proportion of your wealth on a car and cars are garbage. They're worthless because they never gain in value. So he said, when we have a million dollars in the bank, we're going to go out and buy a brand new station wagon because by then, a $14,000 brand new station wagon in the 70s was a very minute percentage of his net worth. Never let a pleasure item be a significant percentage of your net worth. He never became a bank. If you become a personal bank and start loaning money to people, you end up investing in risky people and risky behaviors, people that need money who have maybe leveraged themselves higher than you have. So don't become a personal bank. Don't be a banker. One day we bought this building, big giant warehouse. We were cutting through the wall and it had the number of the janitor on the wall. And it was my dad's name and same phone number that he never changed. You're trying to drum up business. You're making phone calls. You're not getting calls back. I have a secret for people to give you calls back. It's sort of a cosmic answer. If you want people to return your calls, return the calls of the people who are waiting for you to call them back. It'll work. You've got a whole stack of calls that people have made to you. And, and I call those people my discard pile because you don't consider them as important. You go back to that pile of the people you didn't think were that important, you call them all back. Then, cosmically, you're more inclined to get your calls. I don't know why it works, you try it out. If you're waiting for people to call you, go back and call the people you're supposed to call and you'll get your calls. It's a good thing to do anyway. If someone calls you and you can't help them, call them back and tell them that you can't help them. A lot of people call looking for space to lease because we lease commercial space. If it's too small of a tenant, a lot of agents won't even call them back. Won't even give them the courtesy of a call back. My father says, no matter how small the person is, no matter how minute their needs are, even if it's the wrong use, you call them back courteously and give them time and energy. You build a reputation of respect and people like you and are interested in dealing with you. Here's two examples of how you can make money when other people fail. We had a tenant leasing from us. He was paying thousands every month for his rent. His business went upside down because the market went upside down. He ended up leaving and owing us over $100,000, actually over $200,000. A lot of people would have hated this guy. We heard he was looking for space again because the market's improved a little and he's looking to lease again. Who would ever lease to somebody who took all their money? We would. He's going to lease somewhere else and it'll probably work out because times are better. Instead of being angry with the guy, we called him up and said, hey, I know you tried really hard to make it last time and things didn't really go very well when you left and you owed us a lot of money, but we'd, uh, um, we'd like to have you back as a tenant. We're signing a lease with that guy this week, hopefully. We're friends. I know it wasn't personal. Sometimes if someone gets in a bad situation with you financially and it's no fault of their own, why become enemies with them? Why do we have to automatically be enemies with someone who can't pay us money? A woman meets a man who's previously married. He, 
The man has an ex-wife. Why is it that ex-wife automatically has to hate the new woman? You don't have to. You don't have to automatically hate people because of situations. It's, you should be more understanding. Here's one more classic example. A guy I know is a vendor. He's selling products to this other guy. The guy stopped paying him. He's not paying him. The debt's growing larger and larger. Finally, he had to cut the guy off. This guy is into my buddy for like 15,000. He still needs product for his business. He's going to my buddy's competition and paying COD, buying the same product. He should be going to my buddy who is into for 15,000. He should be going back to my buddy and buying product from him. Why can't they come back to you and start paying you cash and give you the business? They owe you the business. If you own a business, let's say some guy is supplying you grains every day and he's dropping your grains off and you can't pay him anymore and you're out of money and he cuts you off. Instead of going to his competition and buying grains, you should go back to him and say, look, I have to buy grains to stay in business. Let me buy them from you cash and I'll, and I'll deliver you cash because that's what I'm doing with the other guy. And then we'll slowly work on paying you back. Why is it that they have to sever off, be enemies, hate each other, and then both guys lose? The people who owe you money should build rapport with you and you should keep working together. That's how you keep business going. So you guys are the landlords to go to. You guys are the nicest, fairest landlords in town. And, and, and if a landlord, if a tenant has a problem, my father or myself will go over there or my brother will go over there and meet with them until the problems are resolved. We know that we work for our tenants. Hey,